The FIFA World Cup is undoubtedly one of the biggest sporting events on the planet, with 206 teams attempting to qualify for the final 32-team tournament and over a billion people watching the final. It is hard to argue with its popularity. But where did the idea of the World Cup come from and how did the first tournament compare to its modern counterpart? Well, strap yourselves in because it's quite the journey. This is the story of the 1930 FIFA World Cup, the first ever World Cup. To fully grasp why the World Cup was created, you need to understand the state of international football before 1930. At this time, the only global international football tournament was played in the Olympics. But even this has huge caveats. The Olympics was for amateur sportsmen only, so no professional footballer was allowed to participate, which meant most countries did not even send a team to participate. For example, at the 1904 Olympics, only three teams played, but two of them were from St. Louis, America, and the other from Canada. Therefore, in 1926, FIFA President Jules Rimet, the man the original trophy is named after, and the secretary of the French Football Association, Henri Delorny, decided to create their tournament which would be open to all players. After spending two years deliberating, FIFA announced the first World Cup would take place in 1930 and take place every four years. Five teams offered to be the hosts, Netherlands, Italy, Spain, Sweden and Uruguay. Netherlands and Sweden would pull out of the running to support Italy's claim. However, Jules Rimet had a preference. He wanted Uruguay to be the host. He had two main reasons for this. Firstly, he believed this would give the tournament a more global flavour. You need to understand that this time, football was still mostly popular in Europe. So he hoped to continue the strong growth of football in South America by playing the World Cup there. His second reason was that Uruguay was considered the best team in the world at that time. They had won the previous two Olympics in 1924 and 1928 in dominating fashion. They scored 32 goals and conceded just 7 across both tournaments in just 10 games. Despite this, the decision was still a surprise as Uruguay only had a population of 2 million. And due to the shortages of stadiums, every game would take place in their capital city, Montevideo. What made this World Cup unique is there was no qualification. FIFA invited all 41 of their members to take part with a deadline to accept set for February 28, 1930. Despite the open invite, just 14 teams accepted the invite, with the only non-European or South American team being Egypt. Many European teams decided not to enter due to the difficulty of travelling to South America. This was a different era, and to travel, it would take a boat journey of up to three weeks. Netherlands, Italy, Spain and Sweden refused to enter, as they were angered that their bids to host the World Cup had been rejected. What about England? They refused to enter. By this time, the FA had left FIFA due to a dispute over broken time payments of amateur players. This once again highlights what a different era this was. Players earned very little from football and needed a full-time job to earn a good wage. So to take time off to play football was a financial risk. By the time the deadline to enter the World Cup had arrived, not a single European team had entered the tournament. This then led to the South American teams threatening to withdraw as they saw this as an insult. The idea of the World Cup looked like it was going to die before anybody had even kicked a ball. Finally, things began to turn around as Jules Rimet and FIFA VP Rodolphe Cidreyes managed to convince their home nations of France and Belgium respectively to enter the tournament. Romania entered in large part thanks to King Carol II who took the throne just a month before the tournament started. He immediately granted amnesty to any players who had been banned from playing football and he convinced all of the employers of the players to give paid leave whilst they were playing at the World Cup by threatening to shut them down otherwise. He then chose the Romanian squad himself. King Carol was quite the maverick. He then also helped persuade Yugoslavia who sent a team without any Croatians who refused to play for them. Finally, the 1930 World Cup was set, with 13 teams from Europe and South America entering. Ah, if you're wondering what happened to Egypt, it goes back to what a different time this was. Due to bad weather, they missed their connection and could not get on the boat that was going to take the team to Uruguay. Before I proceed on the tournament itself, I would appreciate any likes and subscribes. I'll be making a video regarding each of the FIFA World Cups, so if you want to learn more, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. The tournament finally took place between the 13th to the 30th of July 1930, with four groups consisting of Argentina, Chile, France and Mexico are in Group 1, 
Yugoslavia, Brazil and Bolivia were in Group 2. Uruguay, Romania and Peru were in Group 3. USA, Paraguay and Belgium were in Group 4. Each group winner would go into the semi-finals with the winners facing off in the final. France vs Mexico and USA vs Belgium were played at the same time, making them the first games ever played in World Cup history. Lucien Laurence of France was the man who scored the first ever goal in World Cup history, a volley in the 19th minute. A historic moment now, but at the time there was no indication of this. Laurent himself said, Everyone was so pleased, but we didn't all roll around on the ground. Nobody realized that history was being made. A quick handshake and we got on with the game. And no bonus either. We were all amateurs in those days, right to the end. France and the USA would win 4-1 and 3-0 respectively. The first ever of many officiating controversies in World Cup history took place between Argentina and France in the second game of Group 1. In what was considered a match between the two top teams in the group, Argentina were deservedly winning 1-0, but the referee then mistakenly blew for full time six minutes early when Frenchman Marcel Langillet was through on goal. The ref agreed to resume after huge protests from the French, but of course, the chance was gone and Argentina won. France's final match against Chile featured the first ever World Cup penalty and a penalty save, as Chile went on to defeat the French 1-0. In Argentina's second match against Mexico, three penalty kicks were awarded. Guillermo Stabile scored a hat-trick in his international debut as Argentina won 6-3, despite the absence of their captain Manuel Ferreira, who had returned to Buenos Aires to take a law exam. This highlights this amateur era as the idea of an international captain missing a World Cup game to take a law exam in the modern era is unfathomable. Qualification from Group 1 was decided by the group's final match between Argentina and Chile, who had both beaten France and Mexico respectively. The game was marred by a brawl as both teams committed numerous fouls, but Argentina won 3-1 against their neighbours and advanced to the semi-finals. In the second group, Brazil was the group favourites, but shockingly lost to Yugoslavia 2-1 in their opening match. Bolivia, on the other hand, had never won an international match and seemed happy just to be there. They even paid tribute to their hosts by wearing shirts each emblazoned with a single letter, spelling Viva Uruguay as the team lined up. They lost both their games 4-0. Yugoslavia finished top of the group and proceeded to the semi-finals. Brazil was eliminated in the first round. The opening match in Group 3 between Peru and Romania saw two unwanted World Cup records. Placido Galindo of Peru became the first player to ever be sent off in a World Cup match. This match also holds the unwanted record of the smallest crowd in World Cup history, with a generally accepted figure of just 300 people in attendance. The Romanians would go on to win the game 3-1, which did include one positive moment as the fastest goal of the tournament was scored after just 50 seconds. The pre-tournament favourites and hosts Uruguay did not play their first game until day 5 due to construction delays at the Estadio Centenario. This stadium was constructed for the World Cup and remains the national stadium to this day. Uruguay had come into this tournament fully expecting to win. This was highlighted by their training regime. Uruguay had an extremely strict four weeks training camp. An example of the tight rules was goalkeeper Andres Mazzali being dropped from the squad for breaking curfew to visit his wife. Uruguay would go on to win a tight game 1-0 versus Peru in a performance that was heavily criticised by their national media. Uruguay would rectify things by thumping Romania 4-0 in the group decider. The American team contained several British-born players who were making their debut for the national team. Despite this, they managed to beat Belgium 3-0 in their opening game. Both sides struggled for long periods due to heavy rain and snowfall. In the second match of the group, Bert Patanada inspired the USA to a convincing 3-0 win. More on that later. With the USA having secured qualification, the final match was a dead rubber. Paraguay beat Belgium 1-0. Amazingly, 17 group games were played during the group stage, but not a single match finished in a draw. In the semi-finals, the USA faced Argentina on a rain-drenched pitch. The USA team, which had six British-born players, lost Rafael Tracy after just 10 minutes due to a broken leg as the match got violent. He tried valiantly to play on, but he left the match at half-time as Argentina led 1-0. Amazingly, there were no substitutions allowed at this time, so the USA were forced to play with just 10 men in the second half. Argentina made the extra man count as they romped home 6-1. 
Argentina became the first team to ever qualify for the World Cup final. In the second semi-final, Yugoslavia took a shock lead against Uruguay. Uruguay then scored two goals to take the lead. There was a controversial moment just before half-time as Yugoslavia had a goal disallowed by a controversial offside decision. In the second half, Uruguay took it up a gear and crushed Yugoslavia 6-1. Incredibly, both semi-finals finished with an identical 6-1 scoreline. The final was set for Uruguay versus Argentina. Another unique aspect of the World Cup was the absence of a third and fourth place match. There have been inconsistent stories relating to this. Some claim a match was played and Yugoslavia won, but this has been largely dismissed. There have also been reports that Yugoslavia refused to play the match due to their anger at the officiating in the semi-final versus Uruguay. At the end of the tournament, both teams received a bronze medal. Although retrospectively, in 1986, FIFA conducted a ranking for previous tournaments and the USA was given third place due to better goal difference. Uruguay and Argentina contested in what was a rematch of the gold medal match of the 1928 Olympics, which Uruguay won after a replay. The final was played at the Estadio Centenario in Montevideo, Uruguay on 30th of July, a Wednesday with over 93,000 in attendance. It was only one of two World Cup finals to be played on a day other than Sunday, the other being the 1966 FIFA World Cup final, which was played on a Saturday. A disagreement overshadowed the build-up to the match as to which team would provide the match ball. FIFA intervened with a compromise that Argentina would provide the ball for the first half and Uruguay for the second. After 12 minutes, Pablo Dorado put the hosts into the lead, before Argentina winger Carlos Peusel equalised eight minutes later beating goalkeeper Enrique Barrestreo with a powerful shot. In the 37th minute, tournament top scorer Guillermo Stabile gave Argentina a 2-1 lead going into the break. Uruguay levelled the score 12 minutes into the second half via a goal from Pedro Sea and took the lead back for good with a Santos Iriarte goal in the 68th minute. With a minute remaining, Hector Castro put Uruguay up 4-2, sealing victory in the inaugural World Cup. Uruguay had become the first ever World Cup champions and confirmed they were the best team of this era. Uruguay manager Alberto Supici was 31 at the time and still holds the record for being the youngest coach of a FIFA World Cup winning team. Jules Rimet, president of FIFA, presented Uruguay with the World Cup trophy, later to be named after him. The following day was declared a national holiday in Uruguay. The people of Argentina did not take the defeat well. In Buenos Aires, a mob threw stones at the Uruguayan embassy. In just 18 games, 70 goals were scored at an average of 3.89 goals per match. Compare this to the 2022 World Cup, which had an average of 2.69 goals per game. Guillermo Stabile was the top scorer, scoring eight times in just four games. An amazing contribution, especially considering he was not supposed to play. He replaced first choice Roberto Chero, who had an anxiety attack. Incredibly, Guillermo never played for Argentina again. He ended his Argentina career with eight goals from four games. In the United States' 3-0 win over Paraguay, confusion over the identity of the scorer of the Americans' second goal meant that for 76 years, it was thought that the first ever World Cup hat-trick had been scored by Guillermo Stabile of Argentina in their 6-3 win over Mexico two days previously. It was only in 2006 that the second US goal was finally credited to Bert Patanalda, who had scored their other two goals against Paraguay, thus giving him the credit of the first hat-trick instead. Uruguay scored 15 goals in just four games, 3.75 per game. Argentina were top scorers with 18 goals in five games, 3.6 goals per game. The next highest were the USA and Yugoslavia with seven goals scored. Well, there you have it. That was the story of the first ever FIFA World Cup. I'll be doing a video on the 1934 World Cup next. If you enjoyed that video, please drop a like, click subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.